If you want to see this documentary uncut and ad free, check out my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash diverse mentality, where you can check out all my documentaries uncut, raw, and ad-free. The link is in the description below. Also support us on the Diverse Mentality Podcast, daily hip-hop news, debates, and even artist interviews. Check the link in the description below for that. And leave a like on this video. It really goes a long way. Thank you so much and enjoy the video. Where's the, um, the 50 Jay-Z competition? That's the one I've been waiting for. Go against Jigger, your ass is dense. I'm about a dollar, what the f is 50 cents? I don't feel the bullets. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You at least gotta let, let the bullet go. Jay's a big man, he's too big to respond. I'm a big dick, you know the one everybody on. He's, he's a piece of work, man. He always puts somebody in front of him. When Jada came for him, he put Beanie in front of him. When Cam came for him, he put True Life in front of him. And he just didn't compete. No one's scared of 50 Cent. I want everyone to be clear. No one's scared of 50 Cent. <laughs> if we looked at the numbers, yes. then you feel like I did his entire career in, two, in four years. What he did in 15, I did in four. Okay. We don't want to look at that. Men lie, women lie, numbers don't. <laughs> What up, guys? It's your boy Quake, and I'm back with a brand new episode of What Really Happened. If you're not familiar with this series, I started the first episode out with Michael Jackson versus Eminem, and this is basically the sister series of Who Really Won. The Who Really Won series is going to cover more serious beefs and more serious battles with a bunch of diss tracks that happened back and forth. And the reason why I say this series is the sister series is because... This one focuses more on disagreements that people had with each other, not really beefs or battles, not really much diss tracks, just disagreements, and it's going to focus on new battles that haven't really started yet. So like I said, if you haven't checked out episode one, it's Michael Jackson versus Eminem. The link is in the description below to check that out. This episode is way crazier because this involves two hip-hop heavyweights that almost started from the same humble beginnings. As you can tell by the video title, I'm going to be talking about 50 Cent versus Jay-Z. And this wasn't really a battle. It was a lot of subliminal shots back and forth. In the beginning, it started out as an actual battle, but then as things went on, Jay-Z was going more the subliminal route and 50 was going more of the direct route, but it never ended up happening where Jay-Z and 50 were dissing each other back and forth and it's unfortunate that it never really happened because i feel like it would have been one of the biggest hip-hop battles of all time you could argue lyrically jay-z might get him but 50 has different antics in his battles and who knows what could have happened it almost happened a few times but jay-z ended up really ducking the situation and never really went head on with 50 cent you could even argue jay-z felt like he started 50 cents career by giving him a diss in the beginning of his career so maybe that's why he never decided to continue it because he felt like he was helping 50's career instead of hurting it so in order to understand how these two have had a healthy competition we have to start at the beginning of their roots as we get into this 50 cent and jay-z story you'll begin to realize that these two are insane business savvy people who play chess, not checkers. So let's get into the major points of what exactly happened between 50 Cent and Jay-Z, where it all started, where it all went wrong, and where they're at with each other now. We start the story in 1996 when Jay-Z released his debut album on June 25th titled Reasonable Doubt. At this point, the world finally got introduced to the rapper Jay-Z instead of the person Sean Carter. He finally got a taste of success with that debut album and slowly started becoming a household name. But around this time, there was a guy who grew up in South Jamaica, Queens, who didn't go by the name of 50 Cent at that time, but rather went by the name of Boo Boo. And Boo Boo at the time was simply doing what he had to do in the streets to survive whether that's sticking people up 
or selling drugs. Jay-Z at this time was building up his relationship in the music industry, and this is where he started to finally form his relationship with Irv Gotti. And with the relationship with Irv Gotti, eventually formed the relationship with Kenneth Supreme McGriff. And Supreme, around this time, ended up doing a five-year bid in prison and got released on parole in early 1994. And as the years went on, he built up his relationship with people in the music industry in hopes of becoming an executive producer for movies. And as the years went on, Jay-Z's relationship with Irv Gotti, Ja Rule, Murder Inc., DMX, and even Supreme started getting closer and closer. But around this time, as their relationship was starting to blossom, Someone by the name of Boo Boo was slowly starting to build up his own music career by the name of 50 Cent. He started writing music in 1996, and by 1997, he ended up getting introduced to Run DMC's Jam Master J. And Jam Master J was a huge fan of 50 Cent because Jam Master J at that time said that he reminded him of Jay Z, just a more aggressive version. I created this song. And the concept was somehow the rap game reminds me of the crack game. And Jay-Z's album had came out. And I had created that song probably four months before Jay-Z's record came out. And he had a song that was somehow the rap game reminds me of the crack game. And to Jay, that was like, yo, he's gonna be ill. Like, you're gonna be nice. Like, because I was writing some of the topics, some of the things that he let, he liked Jay Z's music, you know, at that point. So he felt like uh creatively that I'd find a pocket that would make what I'm doing the new thing. You know what I mean? And and the character difference is so extreme between me and Jay Z that he knew that I'd have a moment. But he didn't know how to write songs properly. It would just be a bunch of bars with no hook in them. So eventually, Jam Master J signed him to his record label and started teaching him how to write songs properly. But as time went on, Jam Master J got increasingly busy and just had 50 Cent sitting around not doing anything. So 50 had requested to leave Jam Master J's record label and sign with someone else. He ended up signing with the platinum selling producers Track Masters who had a deal over at Columbia Records. Immediately he got to work and recorded 36 songs in two weeks. But once again, 50 Cent was found in a position where he was waiting for his album to get released. And at this time, he titled his debut album, Power of the Dollar. And by the time 1999 rolled around, Jay-Z had released three albums and was becoming a household name in America. And as he was becoming the household name, the people around him he was associated with were doing the exact same thing. And that was Ja Rule with Murder, Inc., Irv Gotti, and even Supreme. But even as 50 Cent wasn't getting his music released, he was still learning the ins and outs of the music industry and started going around Columbia Records, learning every department. And with that knowledge, 50 Cent had decided to be proactive in his career and make himself hot. So in April of 1999, he released a song titled How to Rob. And this track took the music industry by storm because 50 Cent was mentioning names of people in the song which was starting to become forbidden because of the Tupac and Biggie beef. And it was more of a comedic route not to be taken seriously, but he called out various rappers from DMX, Big Pun, Slick Rick, Master P, Diddy, and yes, even Jay-Z. But you could just sell like four milli, got something to live for. Don't want to go putting four through that Bentley Coupe dough. And a lot of artists ended up responding to 50 Cent, and one of them was Jay-Z. And Jay-Z, of course, at this time was on top of the world. So this happening was exactly what 50 Cent wanted. A couple months later, and Hot 97 had their annual Summer Jam show. Jay-Z was there, and so was 50 Cent. Shaka Zulu, who was doing radio at the time at Columbia, decided to take 50 Cent at Summer Jam, took him backstage to meet a bunch of people so that there could be a face attached with the name and song and to let people know that it wasn't a serious diss, it was just fun and games. Well, 50 Cent ended up running into Jay-Z, and Jay-Z said that he's gonna get him back for that. At that time, 50 Cent thought it would be later on, but that night, Jay-Z decided to respond to 50 Cent's How to Rob. 50 Cent? Yeah. So you addressed him at Summer Jam. Yeah. That was a freestyle at first. Yeah. And then you kinda, um, then you got at him on the album. 
Yeah. But um, that was actually the first time I, I performed. I, I did that record. It was the actual, first time I actually performed it. I didn't even know the record. I was backstage, like, trying to make sure that I could get it. And I seen him. I bumped right into him while he was backstage. I ran into Jay in Summer Jam. And he came up like, yo, I'm 50 Cent. Yeah. I said, oh, that's a, that's a, uh, I said, that, that record you got is hot. Yo, I don't like that record you got. I love that record you got. Yeah. I like that joint. He was like, thanks, man. I said, you, yeah, but I, you know I'm about to go in, right? I'm like, all right, you know, do what you do. I didn't know he meant right then. He go on stage. That's the first time I ever seen 30,000 people. He said, I'm about a dollar. Who the f*** is 50 cents? I'm about dollars. Who the f*** is 50 cents? I didn't even know 30,000 people knew who 50 Cent was. I should sell him a bottle of champagne for that. <laughs> That's what I respect, well dude. I, 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 and he's a funny I guy. Feel. I like that dude. Of course, after this, 50 Cent and his team were ecstatic because now all eyes were on 50 Cent after one of the biggest rappers in the game mentioned his name. And with that buzz build up, Columbia Records finally started getting a push behind 50 Cent and started releasing his singles such as Rowdy Rowdy, Thug Love and Your Life's on the Line. On December 28th, 1999, Jay-Z released his fourth studio album, Volume 3, Life and Times of S. Carter. And on track number six, It's Hot, Jay-Z put those bars going at 50 Cent on wax. Go against Jigga, your is dense. I'm about a dollar, what the f is 50 cents? And in 50 Cent's eyes, it was officially on between him and Jay-Z. And in early 2000, 50 Cent released the response track titled Be a Gentleman. And this track officially appeared on 50 Cent's compilation mixtape, Guess Who's Back, which was released in April of 2002. Can I live? Look, if I shoot you, I'm famous. If you shoot me, you're brainless. You said it yourself. I'm slick enough to twist your lines and send them back at you. Swift enough to snatch the Mac and pop that at you. Jay-Z ultimately never ended up responding to this track. 50 Cent ended up eventually getting shot nine times and dropped from Columbia Records. And as 50 Cent was dealing with his own issues and where his career was going to go, Jay-Z's career was skyrocketing even further. Jay-Z in 2000 and 2001 built his relationship up with Murder Inc., Irv Gotti, and Supreme. And he was so close with Supreme that he helped fund his movie, which he executive produced, titled Crime Partners in 2001. Jay-Z in 2001 was facing his own issues in the rap industry, going against Mob Deep and more notably Nas. And as Jay-Z was facing his own issues battling other rappers, 50 Cent was contemplating his comeback. And in 2002, that's exactly what he did. In April of 2002, he released the compilation mixtape Guess Who's Back. Then in June of 2002, he released the G-Unit mixtape 50 Cent is the Future. And at this point, he created a huge buzz for himself, so much so that record labels were causing a bidding war and trying to sign him. Ultimately, on June 20th, 2002, 50 Cent inked a deal with Eminem and Dr. Dre for Shady Aftermath Records. As 50 Cent was slowly starting to take over the industry, Jay-Z's relationship with his former friends started to crumble. On November 19th, 2002, Ja Rule released his new album, The Last Temptation. The album came with a feature from Nas on the fifth track, The Pledge. This ended up causing issues between Irv Gotti and Jay-Z due to the beef between Jay-Z and Nas at that time. And rumors even started to float around of Irv Gotti wanting to sign Nas to Murder, Inc. After this, Jay-Z decided to distance himself from Murder, Inc., Irv Gotti, and Supreme, and rightfully so because later that year, Supreme ended up getting locked up by the FBI. As 50 Cent's buzz started getting crazy in the music industry, Jay-Z revealed that in November of 2002, he told all of his artists to flood the music that they got so that they can get some music out there because 50 Cent is going to drop his album and he's going to take over the whole year. You know, I remember one time walking in the studio and uh, uh, it was like a small gap and uh, uh, bleak beans. Everybody was in there and I was like, man, I'm telling you, man, y'all better, y'all better, y'all got a chance right now. Just flood it, put out a lot of music mm -hmm. because 50 Cent is coming. Mm -hmm. And, you know, 
four months later in the club hit and it was over. And right. It was just like, okay, now everybody got to sit on the sidelines and wait, and wait this tight to wave out. And that's exactly what happened in 2003. On February 6th, 50 Cent released his debut album, Get Rich or Die Trying, and did an outstanding 872,000 copies within his first week of sales, which ended up being the largest debut in hip-hop album of all time. And of course, throughout that whole 2003, he simply took over. And with Jay-Z having issues with Irv Gotti and Murder, Inc., and 50 Cent not liking them at that time as well, it made perfect sense for Jay-Z to stand next to 50 Cent because he was the hottest thing at that moment. Then on April 18th, 2003, Jay-Z announces he has a deal with Reebok and the shoes are titled the S. Carter Collection. And to celebrate that, he releases a mixtape titled the S. Carter Collection as well and decides to jump on 50 Cent's If I Can't Track. You can't out hustle a hustler. You can't out play a player. This rap shit is a layup. And my former biz motherfuckers will spray ya. And the music biz motherfuckers just say stuff. Then just a couple weeks later, on May 1st, 2003, 50 Cent and Jay-Z announced they're doing a tour together titled Rock the Mic. They even appeared on Entertainment Weekly magazine to talk about the tour and their relationship. The interview was interesting because 50 Cent was a newcomer at that time and Jay-Z had established himself well into his career. So immediately off the bat, Entertainment Weekly asks, so, for the record, which of you is the better MC? 50 responds and gives high praise to Jay-Z and says, He is by far. I've been listening to him for a long time. I'm the new kid. Then Entertainment Weekly says, That's not what you say on your records. 50 responds saying, I know because I'm confident. I've always been competitive. But when you've got eight years under your belt and a kid only has one summer, Jay-Z interrupts and says, Seniority rules, but all records are made to be broken. You've got Dr. J, and then you have Michael Jordan, and then you've got Kobe. You know what I'm saying? The game just keeps surviving. That's what it's about. If he continues on this path, he could be the greatest. Who knows? It's hard to judge. Entertainment Weekly then asks, why team up for a tour? And Jay-Z says, a lot of the time in hip-hop, things that could be big never get to happen. You used to have the Fresh Fit in 1984. You had Run DMC, Houdini, the whole lineup on one tour. You seldom get that now. I believe in putting out the hottest thing. We could have toured separately, but we figured if we bring it together, it would be unstoppable. And throughout the interview, they end up praising each other, talking about their upbringings and a lot of similarities that they have there, as well as the music that they make. With this successful tour came a lot of business ideas and ventures. And on June 16, 2003, 50 Cent also inked a deal with Reebok for his G-Unit sneakers. And ultimately, this ended up becoming Jay-Z's idea to give 50 Cent a sneaker deal, according to Steve Stout. 50 sneaker came right on back to Jay's, but it was originally Jay's idea to, to, get, to even extend uh, an invite to 50 to, wow. to, to do his sneaker. With 50 and Jay touring and having sneakers under the same company, they decided to shoot a commercial with a freestyle rap with Jay-Z and 50 rapping about the shoes. Just blaze. And I told y'all I was finna blow like C4. Stunting the G5, flying the G4. T-Unit footwear, T-Apparel. I'm so hood, that blue and that white looks so good. Hip-hop, man. We gon' take it to the next level. Kicks match that hat and that throwback. Kiss that color coordinated, man, you know that. Two fits, I ain't got a jump shot, but I got a left hook. I don't swing golf clubs, but I still like golf brooks. I'm hot, man. I rock me box, man. If it ain't the G unit, it's the S dot, man. S stop taking off. G four's about the land. See how we cross brand. We boss about it, man. Got the soul of the old Gucci's. If you upset, sue me. If not, sit back and watch me do me. Parking lot pimping. Sideline ballers. We don't sweat up the fresh. Let the girls do it for us. The watch talk for me. Drop talk for he. Brand new S dots walk with me. Sorta of like you. Just score the bucket. You bow legged. You front and you walking off with me. Oh, it's nothing. Keep score with me. Give me three hot seconds. I break three black records. And they both sold a lot of sneakers. 50 Cent revealed that G Unit sneakers outsold Jay Z sneakers six to one and netted him $80 million with Reebok. And at that point, 50 Cent's buzz was so high that he was selling more sneakers than most rappers were selling albums. However, 50 Cent and Jay Z working together wouldn't last too long. As November 2003 approached, 
G-Unit as a group was getting ready to release their debut album, Beg for Mercy. And Jay-Z was getting ready to release his new album, The Black Album. And Jay-Z stated that this would be his last album and that he would be retiring. Ultimately, both albums decided on the release date of November 18th, 2003. Jay-Z recalls this in his book, Decoded. He says, when I was about to release The Black Album, we had to push up the release date to get the jump on bootleggers, which put us in the same initial sales week as Beg for Mercy, the first album from 50's crew, G-Unit. 50, in his showman style, got on the radio and announced that he was putting money on Beg for Mercy, outselling the Black Album. This was the same year that 50's first album, Get Rich or Die Trying, had an incredible run, including huge first week numbers. Kevin Lyles at Def Jam called me asking if I wanted to push the date back a couple of weeks to give 50's album and some other high profile releases that week a chance to breathe. I love Kevin. He's one of the nicest people you ever meet, but I told him to put my shit out as planned. And just like that, you have G-Unit versus Jay-Z on a sales battle. So people were waiting for the date of November 18th, 2003 but unfortunately both albums ended up leaking ahead of time so the record labels had to push the albums up even further which would be that following week on friday november 14th so that would mean g unit and jay-z only had three full days of sales leading up to tuesday november 18th finally on november 19th the sales for those three days came in and jay-z's the black album debuted at number one selling 463,000 copies the first week. G-Unit's Beg for Mercy debuted at number three, selling 377,000 copies its first week, right behind Tupac's Tupac Resurrection album. Jay-Z reflected on beating G-Unit in his book Decoded, saying the Black Album debuted at number one, Beg for Mercy was third, and the soundtrack to Resurrection, the Tupac documentary, was the number two album on the charts. There was something beautiful about Pac being my closest competition on the charts that week. Aside from the heartbreak of losing two great MCs and one great friend, I've always felt robbed of my chance to compete with Tupac and Biggie in the best sense and not just over first week sales numbers. Competition pushes you to become your best self and in the end, it tells you where you stand. Although Jay-Z beat the G Unit album when it comes to first week sales, Jay-Z was facing a lot of issues behind the scenes with Rockefeller and Dame Dash and where the album should go creatively when it comes to single selection. And because of poor single selection and timing, the album would eventually not be able to outsell G-Unit's Beg for Mercy in the long run. As of now, G-Unit's Beg for Mercy has sold 6 million copies worldwide, and Jay-Z's Black album has sold 4 million copies. Following this, Jay-Z officially announced his retirement, of course, and stepped away from music. In the meantime, 50 Cent was just getting started. He set up Lloyd Banks' Young Buck to release their debut albums in 2004. While on December 8th, 2004, Dame Dash and Jay-Z announced they're selling Rockefeller Records, and Jay-Z gets officially announced as the president of Def Jam Records. Then in early 2005, there would be issues between one of G-Unit's newest members, The Game, and Jay-Z. 50 Cent ended up getting involved in this because he felt Jay-Z could destroy the game's career because he was a new artist. On February 7, 2005, Jay-Z spit a freestyle that the game took offense to. A couple days later, the game had called 50 Cent on February 10, 2005 to ask him what he should do in this situation. 50 said that he said, hold on, do not do anything. But that night, the game decided to diss Jay-Z on stage and this caused more issues between 50 Cent and Jay-Z. Like he had a, a, a situation with Jay-Z. Mm. You know, that when he had issues with Jay, and I got a phone call from him. He was in Amsterdam when he called me back in the States, and I told him, I said, just sit tight, let me see exactly what it's about. You know, I'll get in contact with Jay and see how it, yeah. you know, really what What's it is. Happening? And uh, before I could get back to him, he went on stage and told everybody to suck him off. If you want to know more about what happened between The Game versus Jay-Z, check out my documentary, The Game versus Jay-Z, What Really Happened. The link is in the description below. 50 Cent had a conversation with Jay-Z and said, do not attack The Game, just let me fix the situation. But ultimately, what ended up happening is The Game turned on 50 Cent, and then 50 had to worry about one of his own crew members, and then they ended up having their own beef. Jay-Z had the exact same thing happen as well around this time with Rockefeller crumbling, Dame Dash doing his own thing, artists leaving left and right. So Jay-Z had to focus on being the president of Def Jam and signing new acts. On October 12, 2005, Supreme reached out for help. 
from Jay-Z and Diddy to help him beat his case that he was facing when it comes to the murder charges. Ultimately, Jay-Z and Diddy did not help Supreme when it comes to his case. Jay-Z was still distant from Irv Gotti and Murder, Inc. as a whole. Then Jay-Z in 2006 would make some great Def Jam president moves. He ended up signing Rick Ross in January of that year and finally returned to the music scene by releasing his ninth studio album, Kingdom Come, on November 21st, 2006. Then in 2007, things would start to heat up once again with 50 Cent and Jay-Z, but this time it would be with one of Jay-Z's protégés, Kanye West. And if you want a more detailed look between 50 Cent versus Kanye West, check out the What Really Happened documentary on that. Then on August 22nd, 2007, 50 Cent and Jay-Z would see each other once again at Screamfest. At that event, Sierra decided to bring on 50 Cent as a surprise guest to perform their track together, Can't Leave Him Alone. 50 Cent then stayed on stage and performed I Get Money, as well as a couple other tracks, then was scheduled to leave. However, T.I. got on stage and decided to bring his surprise guest and even called him the King of New York, which was Jay-Z. And of course, this was a great moment for Jay-Z because he was in New York in Madison Square Garden, and Jay-Z then knew that he wanted to bring out Kanye West so that they could have a full moment. But 50 Cent decided to interrupt that. He decided to go up on stage regardless of people telling him he had to leave, went up on there, and it surprised the hell out of Jay-Z. If you look at the video, he looks visibly upset. Then 50 Cent created it into a whole moment where Diddy got on stage, Swiss Beats, and of course it was T.I., Kanye, Jay-Z, and it turned into a huge hip-hop event. And you run up on stage when he's doing a little too much. Yeah. He ain't like that. Yeah, he ain't like that. He ain't like it. Tell, no, me, yeah. tell me again what he says to you when you run on the stage. You had to come up here, huh? <laughs> That's so yeah. great. Because he was going to have a moment. So he had to shit. So you ran up there. Yeah, and then, then my victory laps. And then Kanye came out. Yeah, he was like, yo, he... <laughs> yeah, he was scared to death. I swear to God. Like, when I don't have a problem. I never have a problem with someone who doesn't actually have a problem with me. That's just who I am. You know what I'm saying? I, I think, think people that do that, huh? But you think he's scared? No, I think he was nervous when he saw me. It's a gorilla versus a teddy bear. How do you... Yeah, like, I think when he came out onto stage, he stopped and was wrong. Because it was supposed know, to be... Because he didn't know what the hell you were Yeah, it's like, yeah, wait a minute. Jay, so then, Jay says to you, you have you had to come up here. Yeah, you had to. What and then saying? he was going up the stage. I said, I run New York. He stopped. <laughs> <laughs> he hates you. <laughs> Then on September 11, 2007, 50 Cent and Kanye West went up against each other in a sales battle. And a week later on September 18th, 50 Cent ended up losing to Kanye West in the battle. After the first week's sales, 50 Cent released the I Get Money remix with Jay-Z and Diddy on September 17th, 2007. Unfortunately, no music video was shot for it due to conflicting schedules. Jay-Z spoke to Entertainment Weekly about the verse he did for 50 Cent's I Get Money. Entertainment Weekly said, I just heard your verse on 50's I Get Money remix last night. How did that come together? Jay-Z responded saying, I just wanted to show that we're not enemies. It's a great story for this. You're the first person to ask, so you got great timing. 50 Cent called me to ask for the remix, and I told him he couldn't put the remix out until the first week came. I didn't want it to affect any type of numbers. So as you see, it came out the 17th when the sound scan cycle is finished. So just to show, I'm still competing. We're not enemies. We're just competing. Then Entertainment Weekly said, at the end of that verse, I love how you say New York is still mine, even though you've transitioned into a CEO role. You still want to put that out there? He said, yeah, I was in artist mode at that time. When I'm in artist mode, why wouldn't New York be mine, right? It certainly is. And it was ironic that Jay-Z said this because Funk Master Flex revealed that around this time when 50 Cent had that I Get Money track and was yelling out that he runs New York, Funk Flex was getting behind 50 Cent and saying that he is the top king of New York right now. Jay-Z, according to Funk Master Flex, called him and said, no, that's not the case. We're giving him that title too early. And Flex says Jay-Z was jealous of 50 Cent's dominance and success at that time. Just like all the other air personalities, he used to call me if he had something he felt, me giving my opinion, or if I, I'll keep it a thousand. I think one time I said 50 Cent was hot. And 50, you rem, now I'm, you remember this. I remember this. You remember, so I'm not lying. Not at all. Okay. 
50 Cent was hot. I went on the radio that day and I said he was the king of the city. <laughs> I mean, Kaiser, I got to mention your name today, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Kaiser connected Jay. And Jay said, we can't give him that right now. Too soon. It's too soon. How'd you, how'd you remember? I remember this. I remember Conversation. This. Yes. You was used to it with me. I've had it on speaker. Yeah, yeah. And he said it was too soon. Yeah. I disagreed. Yeah. Um, I, I, it was just I disagreed. And he's an important guy. But when he, when he called me, I wasn't, I get it. If there's another DJ hotter than me, I'm okay with that. Sure, right. <laughs> but if there's another DJ hotter than me, there is. You know, there's a lot of DJs hotter than me, bigger than me, make make things happen more than me. So I would understand if somebody says somebody's the king of the city. 50 Cent also felt that the battle between him and Kanye West was really a battle between him and Jay-Z because Jay-Z at the time was the president of Def Jam and Kanye was signed to Def Jam. So Jay-Z made sure he would fund Kanye's album and do everything in his power to make sure Kanye beats 50 Cent. And the reason why 50 Cent feels like this is because in Jay-Z's book, Decoded, it definitely sounds like Jay-Z is taking credit for beating 50 Cent in the Kanye West battle. In his book, he said this, a couple years back when I was still running Def Jam, 50 Cent challenged Kanye West to a battle over who would get the biggest first week sales numbers. This was when 50's Curtis album and Kanye's graduation album were scheduled to come out the same day. The whole thing was fun and useful marketing, and Ye won by close to 300,000 units. But it was also kind of strange to watch people, regular fans, get so caught up in this battle over numbers only in hip-hop. I'm not complaining. I love the competition, even the sales battles. Then in 50 Cent's book, Hustle Harder, Hustle Smarter, he elaborated how Jay-Z used Kanye to beat him. In the book, he said, even worse, I was competing against an artist whose label was doing everything, and I mean everything, to make sure he beat me. Jimmy Iovine might not have cared about beating Kanye, but Jay-Z, who was the head of Def Jam at that time, damn sure cared about beating me. Jay had been extremely uncomfortable with my run in New York City for years, so he did everything under the sun to make sure he could beat me through Kanye. I realized what I was up against in the weeks leading up to the release when Kanye and I both agreed to do joint appearances on BET. I had planned to bring Eminem with me, but BET told Interscope we couldn't have guests. Interscope said fine and told Eminem not to come. Then the day of the show, I get there and Jay-Z is performing with Kanye. So clearly Jay-Z had gone to some length to get around that no guess rule, whereas Interscope Records had just let it go. They simply weren't as motivated as Jay-Z. Jay-Z took a lot of pride in Kanye's victory. I think that's one of the reasons he's so disappointed in Kanye today. Jay knows how much he supported Kanye during that period, but it wasn't enough for Kanye. That probably hurt Jay. Jay even mentioned my battle with Kanye in his book, Decoded taking a little shot at me when he wrote rappers who use beef as a marketing plan might get some quick press but they're missing the point i congratulate jay for doing the right thing by his artists in that situation but i think he was the one who missed the point first like i mentioned there was no actual beef in that particular competition second without the competition i have little doubt that due to interscope's missteps my sales would have been much lower our competition actually turned what would have been a tough first week for me into a very respectable one. If I had just left Interscope to their own devices, I might have only sold 400000 that week. Instead, I managed to salvage a tough situation and create a historic moment. As I later told an interviewer, Kanye West gets the trophy, 50 Cent gets the check. That's no shot at Kanye. He made a lot of money too, but it's a trade I'll take every time. Despite all this, 50 Cent and Jay-Z decided to continue to work together 
And later that year, on November 20th, 2007, they collaborated for Freeway's new album, which was released under Rockefeller Records and G-Unit Records. Both Jay-Z and 50 Cent executive produced the album and appeared on the album. Jay-Z appeared on the track Rockefeller Billionaires, and 50 Cent appeared on the track Take It to the Top. In 2008, 50 Cent took his dominance to the next level and ranked above Jay-Z on Forbes Hip Hop 20th Biggest Earners. He ended up earning $150 million that year, number one, with Jay-Z being number two right below him with $82 million. That was the year, of course, that 50 Cent sold his vitamin water steak and made $100 million off that. As 2009 rolled around, 50 Cent would end up having issues with Rick Ross, the person that Jay-Z signed back in 2006 to Def Jam. And a lot of people speculated behind the scenes that it was Jay-Z that gave Rick Ross the green light to go at 50 Cent. After that battle with Rick Ross, later in 2009, 50 Cent would then shift his focus and go at Jay-Z. On September 3rd, 2009, 50 Cent released the music video for his song, Flight 187. And in the song, he sends shots at Jay-Z. Like then on September 8th, 2009, Jay-Z releases his new album, Blueprint 3. And on the track, A Star Is Born, he mentions 50 Cent. Then a couple days later, on September 13, 2009, Kanye West decides to go on stage and interrupt Taylor Swift. And that same night, during that same award show, Jay-Z was performing with Alicia Keys, and Lil Mama went on stage randomly as well. This ended up becoming huge gossip in the celebrity media news, and a lot of celebrities got asked, what would they do in this situation? 50 Cent did an interview on September 16, 2009 and said that nobody would be comfortable going on stage if he was there and that if Kanye did that to him, he would black his eye. I wish he would come take one of my awards so I could black his eye <laughs> in front of everybody. Yeah, you might not have put up with it the way that she did. I he pick and choose who you feel safe doing that with, though. Be honest, like, he exactly. shouldn't worry about me. Pink was finna get to him. Yeah, she's gonna take him like, out, I think. Then on September 22nd, 2009, while Jay-Z was doing his promo run for Blueprint 3, he stopped by BBC One's Trevor Nelson's show, and Trevor revealed what 50 Cent said about Kanye West and that nobody would go on stage if 50 was there. Jay-Z responded by saying, no one is scared of 50 Cent. No, I don't think he would have done that if that was 50 up there, you know? I think he would have done that if that was 50 Cent. No one's scared of 50 Cent. Well, you know what I mean. I'm just, you know, I want everyone to be clear. No one's scared of 50 Cent. <laughs> and around this time, 50 Cent was promoting his new album, Before I Self-Destruct, and was doing various interviews responding to Jay-Z, calling him a punk, and saying that he avoids real beef. No, I think... The guy who was talking to him made him feel like a punk. You see what I'm saying? So he had to say, yo, nobody is scared of 50. Let's get this clear. Nobody is scared of 50. You know, but I'm not the issue. Him making you feel like a punk is the issue. And at the end of the day, I look at it and people don't assess themselves. Even really intelligent people. Jay's a smart guy. You know what I'm saying? He'll analyze other people and other things that they're doing and not actually look at what's happening to him and his transition and difference but his actual right now he's in a real safe space he created this real safe aura this is why people walking on the stage and why shit is happening like that a lot of it it wouldn't have been like that if he actually dealt with his issues himself see he, he's 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 piece of work, man. He always put somebody in front of him. When Jada came for him, he put Beanie in front of him. And Beanie went back and forth with Jada Kiss. When Cam came for him, he put True Life in front of him. And they went back and forth. And he just didn't compete. Then towards the end of October in 2009, Beanie Siegel started voicing his frustration towards Jay-Z and them having a fallout. On November 4th, 2009, Beanie Siegel and 50 Cent appeared on the same stage at a radio station and discussed Jay-Z. And because both of them had a dislike towards Jay-Z, 50 Cent started bringing Beanie Siegel close to him and started using him to go against Jay-Z. Right. 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 
I, look, I think he has good intentions, Jay, but he's using a traditional corporate business model. And I think the only way, place that he really went wrong is saying La Familia, like we family. That, that's the whole thing. Like, if it, like, for me, like, when you say family, like, that means something to me. You know what I mean? Like... Following this, 50 Cent released his new album on November 9th, 2009, titled Before I Self-Destruct. And on track number four, So Disrespectful, he sends some shots at Jay-Z. Jay's a big man. He's too big to respond. I'm a big dick. You know the one everybody on. A couple days later, on November 13th, 2009, Beanie Siegel and 50 Cent collaborate for a new track titled I Go Off. And at the end, 50 Cent is attacking Jay-Z and bigging up Beanie Siegel. You change, man. You let the money change you, Jay. You used to be from my house. Now you used to pass the great fruit pound. You don't want the shoes? I go off. I take them. <laughs> feed the wolves and the wolves feed off you. Eat your ass alive. I live by combat free strategy. Your more. Then on November 22nd, 2009 was the American Music Awards where Eminem and 50 Cent performed Crack a Bottle. And 50 Cent at that time was backstage after they finished their performance. Jay-Z went up on stage and accepted his award. After his speech, he said at the end, women lie, men lie, numbers don't, and started laughing. Immediately after that, people assumed it was shots at 50 Cent. Men lie, women lie, numbers don't. <laughs> A couple days later, on November 25th, 2009, 50 Cent responded to those AMA comments and simply said Jay-Z has been saying that a long time and he didn't take those as shots towards him. Now, in the AMAs, of course it was rumors when he got his award, he said men lie, women lie, numbers don't lie. Right, right. He says he's going at fifth, this is this is his little remark at fifth, and sort of laughing. But he's been saying that before. He said that before. Now, when you heard that, see, when I seen it, I wasn't thinking about that. I was thinking about, I just seen Fifth perform, so Fifth might be backstage. And now he has to walk backstage. Yeah. So I thought that, you know, it might have been a problem or situation because at that point, there's no security back there. It's just you and him. Nah, he wasn't. Nah, he ain't saying nothing. I didn't take that directly towards me. Mm -hmm. If that was, then he should say something a little more direct so we could stop rapping and get right to the shit. Then on November 30th, 2009, Beanie Siegel was going around radio stations attacking Jay-Z and revealed in an interview that Jay-Z was gearing up to get Nas on the Empire State of Mind remix to diss him and 50 Cent. In the interview, this is what Beanie Siegel said, I'm nice at chess too. They say he got a record supposed to come out, the remix to the New York shit. He's popping shots at me, popping shots at 50, but he pulled Nas on the record hoping that a guy will respond to it and come at Nas and Nas is going to come right back. He ain't going to hold no punches. He's going to come right back. He should come right back, but look at the moves. I see that. I'm not worried about Nas. I did that already. I did that already in defense of him. I did that. I was there when dude was in the studio on the couch scratching his head under pressure. And what he's referring to here is when Jay-Z was going at Nas. Beanie Siegel is saying that he helped Jay-Z respond to Nas and try and destroy him. Ultimately, though, this Empire State of Mind remix with Nas going at 50 and Beanie Siegel never got released. We don't know what source Beanie Siegel had at that time when he was saying this, but it would have been an interesting thing to hear. Then on December 2nd, 2009, 50 Cent talked to Rolling Stone more about his relationship with Beanie Siegel and the song I Go Off. Rolling Stone said, I Go Off, your single with Beanie Siegel recently came out. There's a lot of speculation that he's going to be in G-Unit. Is that going to happen? 50 responded saying, there's a strong possibility we're going to be doing it. We're starting with this song and the deal structure between me and him is complete 50% profit split. It's not like an artist deal like you get 50% of everything. For me to deal with Beanie, I'd have to explore the possibility of doing that entire project because I wouldn't want to force him to make commercial music where he can make decent money. A lot of the money without selling a lot of records and just let it be what it is. That's the details, the difference between doing a deal with that artist and other artists. Ultimately though, as time went on, Beanie Siegel never ended up officially signing to G-Unit Records. Then on December 5th, 2009, 50 Cent was doing his tour promoting his Before I Self-Destruct album and on Tim Westwood, he 
he got asked about Jay-Z and said that Jay-Z isn't a big artist worldwide. He's only big in America. There's a huge difference in energy internationally in 50 Cent and Jay-Z. In fact, his largest selling record sold 400 and 30 something thousand copies. My largest selling records, plural, two of them sold five million. So let them be fooled in America and think there's a competition there because America can be purchased. We can buy it with marketing dollars. You see what I'm saying? But the rest of the world, there's not enough marketing dollars to go around. After all the crazy back and forth with 50 Cent and Jay-Z in 2009, 50 and Jay would run into each other on September 3rd, 2010. Eminem and Jay-Z around this time were doing a couple concerts together and they performed at Comerica Park on September 3rd. While there, they brought out a lot of guests, including 50 Cent, Dr. Dre, G-Unit, D12, and various other people. The crazy thing is, 50 and Jay ran into each other backstage and a photo of them two talking went viral online when it got released. And a lot of people were wondering if the conversation was cordial and what exactly they talked about. MTV asked 50 Cent about this photo and what they talked about and he said this, we got a chance to kick it for a minute. I know people were interested in what the conversation was like, but they can ask Jay-Z. I take people's actions as if it's genuinely how they feel. I can only use what I saw you do as if that's what you meant. I can't understand what your motivation was prior to that. I had a conversation with P. Diddy the night before Jay. He gave me a whole new perspective on his actions. We created a little clarity out there. After this, 50 Cent and Jay-Z wouldn't really spar back and forth with each other anymore. As time went on, they both started focusing more on their businesses and less on music. On May 1st, 2012 though, Jadakiss was sitting down with Who Kid and revealed that he was in the studio with Jay-Z and Jay-Z was praising 50 Cent's hook ability. Jadakiss said this in the interview, that's why Fifth was another kind of monster because his hook game was on a whole nother level. Me and Hove was talking about it one time and he was like, yo, this guy's hooks are crazy. And as the years went on, 50 Cent would consistently mention Jay-Z in his interviews and critique some of his business moves, such as September 2012, when 50 Cent said, Jay-Z stays close to artists to remain relevant. Then while out on a promo run for his album Animal Ambition, 50 Cent said in an interview in April of 2014 that he's the one that made Jay-Z retire from the years of 2003 to 2006. Where was Jay-Z from 2003 to 2006? I saw 23 million records between 2003 and 2006. Right. He stopped making music, said, I'm going to go be the president of a record company. <laughs> I, like, I quit. We'll get back to what me and you got later, Fifth. I quit. Time out. I'll come back to play later. Then he signed the, the Beyonce contract. I was like, yeah, men lie, women lie, numbers don't. Right. Was that joint? That should, that shit is a tough one to beat. You got to, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. I can't, you know, I can't really get with it. Like, when she started doing a lot, I said, God damn. He done went and got breasts. <laughs> In 2014, 50 Cent revealed that Beyonce attacked 50 Cent over the back and forth him and Jay-Z had. And this might be because 50 Cent would constantly say that overseas, people would not know Jay-Z. They would only know Jay-Z as Beyonce's husband. And B was, one time she jumped up or she jumped off of the ledge, came running over because she thought me and Jay had issues. And I was like, what the and I was like, did she really just jump down and run over here like Beyonce that? Beyonce jumped off a ledge. <laughs> yeah, what happened? She was in the cosmopolitan, huh? Right. She really a superhero. She jumped down and no, she was like this, what? Like that Bonnie and Clyde for real. Yep. You try this or what, boy? I'm here. <laughs> Word. She okay. bugged down like at me. She looked, I said, What's what? the with her? She, <laughs> she looked at me like that. I was like, what? I looked, Jay started laughing. He was like. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you know what it is. I said, oh, what the f*** got going on, man? B at the hell. B jumped down off of the joint. Like, what? What's up? Oh. Then in December of 2014, 50 Cent said that Jay-Z will fail at boxing promotion. He told BET, I think they're going to clean Jay-Z up. 
You can't just buy your way into it by purchasing existing companies and stuff like that. You look at the roster of fighters, you have to have experienced people around to run it. But boxing is like the fur coat business. We don't know how much they actually sold the jacket for. Ironically enough, as the years went on, both 50 Cent and Jay-Z failed at boxing promotions business. SMS Promotions, which was 50's company, closed down. And Jay-Z's Rock Nation Sports closed down as well. Then on June 30th, 2017, Jay-Z released his new album, 444. And 50 Cent decided to clown the album for attacking newer artists and called the album Golf Course Music. I listened to Jay-Z, the, the 444. I thought this shit was all right. You know what I'm saying? I, I like this shit. But I'm going to keep it 100. The shit was a little, the shit was too smart. Right? I felt like I was supposed to be wearing like glasses and shit and look like tie like a fucking sweater around my waist. It was like Ivy League shit. Now I'm gonna tell you the truth. This is high out here. So they don't wanna hear that shit. They just wanna have a good time. You know what I'm saying? And that you can't be the best rapper at forty seven because the new niggas is here. They coming with new shit going on. That's why I was laughing when the with the Joe Buttons nigga mm -hmm. with the Amigos mm -hmm. niggas, cause they up, they up next. You gotta let the young niggas come in. Come with future and all this other shit. Leave them niggas alone, B. What the fuck is the matter with you, man? I ain't gonna hold you up, son. It was like golf course music. <laughs> then on July 5th, 2018, 50 Cent said that Jay-Z is a very sneaky person, and a lot of people don't notice the sneaky stuff he does against his opponents. 50 said that Jay-Z still gets at Nas by releasing the same day as him. Because at that time, Jay-Z and Beyonce released their new album and Nas released his new album at the same time. And 50 said he was doing that just to clown Nas's releases. The environment is crazy because you see he hurried up and dropped Beyonce. There's mad huh? rumors. Him and Beyonce dropped the album, so. Yeah, it was that what they did to Nas. Right? <laughs> That's it's crazy, right? You, you, I know what you did to Nas, Jay. <laughs> That's fucked up. I, I feel like Nah, he come out on the same weekend. This is still slapping him without everybody noticing what's going on. But that was still like, oh, so when your shit coming out? Uh -uh. My See shit ya. coming out. <laughs> I ain't heard not one of them records on the radio. <laughs> What? Why the fuck? Why the fuck you do that, man? <laughs> I be saying fuck that I do whatever the fuck I want to do, and they be looking, they be like I'm grimy for doing that. This could be super quiet doing some real grimy shit. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> looking and, and see if anybody knows the grimy shit I just did. You know what I'm saying? You just got a different way of doing things. Then more recently, on April 18th, 2022, 50 Cent voiced his frustration at Jay Z. For the Super Bowl halftime show, Noriega on Drink Champs revealed that Jay Z told him that if it wasn't for Eminem, 50 Cent wouldn't be performing on the Super Bowl. I hit the homie, the big homie Jay Z, right? I said to my nephew, I said, Yo, listen, I have to ask him this straight up. So I said, Yo, why? Who is the people that's on? Um, in the in the foul, and and he said to me, and I'm sorry for anybody who don't understand. And he said, the white guy called for for fifty cent. Mm. So I said, who's who's the white guy? I'm I'm digging this Jimmy Iovine. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, Eminem called directly. For 50. And he said, that's Yo. his guy. He said, I can't do it if I can't bring 50 up. But me. that's his guy. Now, that's beautiful. And guess who's Dre's guy? Your me. guy. Mm -hmm. hey, Let's make some noise. And of course, 50 Cent caught wind of this and responded on Instagram saying, why would he have to say that should be a question, Nori? Your big homie is running around trying to look like a painter. Then he posted a photo of Jay-Z being compared to Basquiat in resemblance of looks. And in the caption, he said, why did he say the white boy? Why didn't he say the biggest rap artist in the world? With a laughing emoji, happy Easter, man. Enjoy the holidays. Then more recently, on September 16th, 2022, 
50 Cent responded to Young Guru, who is Jay-Z's right-hand man when it comes to audio engineering for his music. In the clip, Young Guru reveals that 50 Cent's hooks were amazing and that they always envied his hooks. 50 Cent saw the video and responded on Instagram saying, I love you guys too. I just need somebody to compete with. It makes me find a way. Jay-Z knows I will always find a way. And that recent post basically sums up the relationship between 50 Cent and Jay-Z. They used each other a lot for energy and they used each other a lot for business. And it never really ever got disrespectful. They were just clowning each other back and forth whenever they did respond to each other. It was nothing ever that serious. And these two are some of the smartest businessmen in the world. So of course they're gonna use certain 48 laws of power tactics against each other to benefit each other. And 50 Cent sums up their relationship the best when he talked to MTV News in 2011. He said, we don't have those kind of relationships. These people are people I associate with. We are in the same business. We are not necessarily friends. We don't call each other for no reason. It's not like we have something against each other to make us enemies. Me and Jay will use each other repeatedly for energy. And that's it for 50 Cent versus Jay-Z, what really happened. It would have been one of the greatest hip hop battles of all time if Jay-Z actually engaged with 50 Cent when it comes to battling. It would have been the biggest thing ever, possibly bigger than Nas versus Jay-Z. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below about the video and what video you guys want me to do on the What Really Happened series next. That's it for today's video. If you guys want to support this channel further, you can do so at patreon.com forward slash diverse mentality. For just $3 a month, you can get my videos uncut and raw the way I intended them to be, but couldn't because of YouTube. Plus, you also get access to our Discord community, where we have a great community talking about hip hop and various other things. It's very dope. So only $3 a month, I'd really appreciate the support. Also follow us on social media at QuakeGW and at Diverse Mentality. Thank you so much for the support, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.